In the rolling hills and desert plains of the ancient Near East, there existed two nations with a shared ancestral lineage, Moab and Ammon. Descendants of Lot, these nations had grown and thrived since the days of their origin. However, like siblings competing for their father's affection, Moab and Ammon often found themselves at odds. Their story began with Lot's daughters. Long ago in the land of Canaan, there lived a man named Lot. Lot was the son of Haran, and Haran was Abraham's brother. Lot had two daughters who, in a desperate and misguided act, bore two sons, Moab and Ben-Ami, to their father after the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. From this union, the Moabites and Ammonites emerged, their names forever etched in history, Genesis 19, 36, 38. Moabites and Ammonites had each established their own distinct cultures and territories. Moab occupied the fertile lands to the south, blessed with vineyards and fields, while Ammon thrived in the arid lands to the north, known for their skilled shepherds and nomadic lifestyle. The land of the Moabites was situated to the southeast of the Dead Sea, extending from the southern part of modern-day Jordan into the western regions of modern-day Saudi Arabia. The capital of Moab was often associated with the city of Dibon, the Moabite territory was characterized by a mix of desert and fertile plains, making agriculture and pastoralism significant to their way of life. While the land of the Ammonites was located to the north of Moab, in what is now northern Jordan and parts of western Syria, the capital city of the Ammonites was Rabbah, which is often referred to as Rabbath Ammon in the Bible. The Ammonite territory was more arid compared to Moab, and their people were known for their pastoral lifestyle, relying heavily on herding and nomadic traditions. Both the Moabite and Ammonite territories were east of the Jordan River and are often mentioned in the Old Testament of the Bible in connection with various events and interactions with other biblical figures and nations. Today, these lands are part of modern-day Jordan, with their historical significance still evident in archaeological sites and ancient ruins found throughout the region. Over time, their lands expanded, and the peoples of Moab and Ammon developed unique cultures and traditions. Yet, their shared ancestry also led to territorial disputes and conflicts, echoing the ancient rivalries of their forefathers. Conflict between these two nations, among others, were competition for territory and resources. Given their close proximity and shared border, the Moabites and Ammonites had disputes over land boundaries access to fertile land for agriculture, and control of strategic locations. The region they inhabited, part of the ancient Near East, was characterized by arid deserts and limited water sources. These limited resources led to tensions. Lot's daughter's actions in bearing children through their father Lot also had a lasting impact on the Moabites and Ammonites, as these nations trace their ancestry back to this union. This event, while born of desperation, illustrates a complex moral and ethical dilemma similar to the biblical story of Jacob and Esau. In the case of Jacob and Esau, their story is found in the book of Genesis, Genesis 25, 19, 34, and Genesis 27. Jacob and Esau were twin brothers, with Esau being the elder. Esau, driven by immediate physical needs and desires, sold his birthright, which included his rights to inheritance and blessings, to Jacob in exchange for a bowl of stew. This decision had significant consequences for their future relationship and the destiny of their descendants. Similarly, Lot's daughter's actions in the story of Moab and Ammon involve a morally questionable decision driven by immediate survival needs. They believed that their actions were necessary to ensure the continuation of their family line during a time of perceived isolation. However, the consequences of this decision shaped the destinies of the Moabites and Ammonites and played a role in their disputes over territory and resources. In both cases, these stories illustrate the complexities of human choices and their long-lasting effects on individuals, families, and even entire nations. They highlight the importance of considering the moral and ethical implications of our decisions and how they can reverberate through generations. But as seasons changed and the years passed, a new generation of leaders arose among these nations.
In the parched desert of Ammon and the fertile valleys of Moab, wise elders saw the futility of their disputes. They remembered the story of reconciliation from their sacred scriptures, for the Bible taught them, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Matthew 5, 9. Determined to find common ground, Moabite and Ammonite elders convened at an oasis, a neutral ground between their territories. They discussed their shared struggles, the challenges they faced, and the dreams they held for their people. Inspired by the biblical wisdom that iron sharpens iron, Proverbs 27, 17, they decided to cooperate rather than compete. The Moabites shared their knowledge of agriculture, cultivating vineyards and fields, while the Ammonites imparted their nomadic skills, raising strong herds. Together they established trade routes that allowed resources to flow freely across their lands. As the fruits of their labor began to flourish, so did the bonds of friendship and trust between Moab and Ammon. Word of their remarkable transformation spread far and wide, reaching the ears of leaders from neighboring nations. Drawn by the power of unity, they sought the wisdom of the Moabite and Ammonite elders, realizing that their shared heritage had the potential to bridge divides and build bridges of cooperation. In the end, their story became a testament to the words of Ecclesiastes 4.12. Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. As the Moabites and Ammonites thrived together, their unity became a living parable, reminding all who heard of the transformative power of reconciliation and cooperation. And so, in the spirit of unity and understanding, let us close with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the story of Moab and Ammon, for it reminds us that even in the face of ancient rivalries, peace and cooperation are possible. We pray that we may carry this lesson in our hearts, striving to be peacemakers and builders of unity in our own lives and communities. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.